think I can hear everyone. Yeah. All right. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. So, um, okay. You got 23 questions for you guys. Do you want to get started on this? Uh, yeah. What? Okay. Yeah, let's go ahead. Should we have like some sort of a, like a running order just so we don't all start talk on top of each other? Like, could you just address the question to one, one of us at a time? Okay. I okay. can do that. Cool. Some of, them, some of them are for all three of you, so I guess you just... Yeah, just say whichever you want to answer first so we don't just all... <gasps> okay. Um, first question is, what differs uh, with Penny from the previous albums, and how do you expect people to receive it? Okay. Let it go. <laughs> uh, well, uh, the first one, uh, or the last one, the last album, it was a I think it was a big, big step forward for the guys, and this one is is a small step backward. So um, I I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, uh, when Ari said step backward, I agree with him to some degree. It it is one step backward, but I think it's three steps forward as well. So there's a lot of stuff we've never done before on this one. A lot of new stuff for us. Just. A lot of more of everything, pretty much. A little bit of the old and a lot of the new. So, and it's pretty hard to describe the album, like what's the difference or, because uh, it's so versatile. There's a lot of different kind of material on the album. There's 12 songs and it's everything from death metal to pop rock to electronic acoustic weird stuff. So, um, yeah, Mossy, why don't you say something? Yeah, I'm, I mean, for me, obviously, it's just the first album, but I'm uh, part of the Immoral team, so it's, it's, uh, I can't really say about, uh, about the previous ones, except what I've listened to. Uh, but obviously, uh, the choice to bring on a 30-plus really fucking sexy guitar player is obviously <laughs> a step forward. So, <laughs> Yes, amen, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, oh, so, yeah. Okay. Um, question two. This one, I guess, will go for uh, Ben and Ari. Ben, you can start. Did the reactions of the fans towards Show Your Colors influence your work on Beneath? Uh, none whatsoever, to be honest. I think we handled and processed all the reactions and all the backlash and everything between the albums. Like, we, we wrote and recorded the first album before anybody even knew Ari was in the band. So it has had no effect on Show Your Colors. And then... All hell broke loose with the release of the news and the album, and people either loved it or hated it. And uh, but we've had two years to process the whole thing and get over it, and we're cool with it. And I absolutely refuse to write material because somebody thinks that I should write death metal or whatever. So it really did not affect at all. Okay. Um, how, how many songs were written for the new album, and how did you decide which ones would be on the album? Um, we had 14 songs all together, and we just can't fit all 14. We had already, it's like an hour-long CD as it is. So we just left out the two that the band and the producer, Jan, thought that didn't really fit the whole package. So we left out the heaviest, the fastest song, which is actually, funnily, it's the most similar to our past, like from the old albums. And it's a really cool song, and the Japanese really liked it, so they have it as a bonus track for in Japan, and then we also left out one song called "Sleeping with Strangers," which is uh, kind of this, would you say, uh, like a little southern rock vibe, maybe, like a little more blues-oriented, which is a really cool song, and we'll use it for some sort of a B-side at some point. But uh, yeah, we're gonna have 12 tracks on the album. Yeah, I thought even the even the songs that were dropped off the album, yeah, they weren't dropped off because because they wouldn't be good. I mean, uh, uh, actually, the heavier song at the time we were practicing and recording the album, it was my favorite track at the time, but it just didn't fit the album. I still love the tune, but yeah, it didn't fit the album, so. Yeah. But it's a great song. I hope everyone gets to hear it at some point. Yeah, I think Ari also fought it to be on the album, but... Uh... Yeah, I, I like the like like the song. I'm I'm actually not not even sure if if it's it's the most unfeelable song for the album, but 
But things things got good. It sounded Japan CD, so yeah, and you sing really great on that one too. So yeah, people really that, that one and that one alone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rest is crap now. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt that. <laughs> no, the rest is great too. I've liked the two songs I've heard so far. So okay, um, Ben, we'll start with you. Out of the whole process, writing, recording, and preparing for preparing right now for the release of the album. What's the hardest part for for you? Um, I don't know if there's been one hard part that, um, uh, that's a good question actually, I've never thought about it, it's just been one long process of writing it for a few months and then recording it in a month and just working on everything from album covers to release dates and choosing singles and whatnot, so, I guess maybe the studio session, we did a lot of long days and I just... I really didn't sleep all that much during that month, just a few hours a night. Not because I didn't have the time to, I just couldn't get any, like, decent good night's sleep. Just waking up at fucked up hours because just song lyrics and melodies are running through your head after. Yeah, and I was, I was playing the pinball machine. Yeah, that didn't help at all. I was playing pinball in the next room. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, it wasn't like a crew, like too hard or anything like that. I enjoyed the process all like from beginning, writing the riffs, writing the songs to all the way up here. Like today we're just finishing up the album covers and it's so cool. I love the whole process. I think I think the uh, the, the thing is that the process has been so long but the uh, things we have done have been in such a, a quick, small um, like rush hours and it has been like like a power drift like from time to time. I don't know. It's been like very very busy at the times, but but the the whole process has been long, and we have to have to wait for stuff to happen and shit like that. Yeah, so it happens little spurs, and then there's again like a month break before anything else happens. Like after the recording. Then you just wait and wait and until it's time for the deadlines for the album covers and then you start to rush for it. So that's how it always works. Okay. Um, okay. The Ben and Mossy, who writes the harder solos? Mossy. <laughs> uh, I confess that Ben writes the better ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, there's some mean guitar playing on this one. It was really cool. It's like it was a good kick for the both of us to have another guy who plays leads there to just just like a friendly competition if you will like just yeah f friendly friendly these guys were punching each other yeah in and the it's the first time this is the first time we've been talking since the recording so <laughs> friendly it was yeah Ben how are your recaps doing <laughs> it's okay I hope I didn't punch you too hard dude yeah no problem no it's, it's actually it's, really great because uh uh, I haven't played with another lead guitar player ever, uh, so usually I've been able to kind of drift by and uh, kind of play whatever. Uh, but now there's another guy who I really admired before I joined the band. This I'm bullshit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. So, so it was, <laughs> Yeah, so, so it was really, really kind of... Uh, kind of pushed me to uh, kind of really make sure that there's there's no slack on my part, on the guitar part, and I'm still trying to catch up with Ben with that, uh, with the touch and all that stuff, so hope that makes any kind of sense. I already can uh, shout something out. <laughs> <laughs> no, it turned out really cool. There's a lot of yeah. guitar solos on the album, and and I'm really proud of it. It's like by far the best guitar work I've done. And I haven't heard everything that Mossy's done, but I'm pretty sure his leads have never been this wacky before. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I like the I like the Indian vibe that Mossy is bringing to to the band. Yeah, it's it's uh, kind of a Middle Eastern thing because I grew up there, so so. Yeah, I heard that on the last single. That was really cool. Yeah. 
Now, speaking of solos, uh, Ben, many of us followed the, the Daily Studio blog, and we were just curious, did the Converse slippers help you get your edge on your solos? <laughs> yes, they did. And I was, like, for the for first few weeks there, I was, like, walking around slippers, <laughs> just feeling, like, not that whole, like the other guys. They They were all happy and just giving us great performance. I was kind of lacking in that department, but then I brought my Converse slippers and uh, my playing just got better immediately. It's funny how those things work. <laughs> I can't really explain it, but... Uh, you, get, you, it. you got more slippery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that was good. Yeah. yeah, if we can't be free, let's be cheap at least. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, also I mentioned in the studio vlogs, you guys recorded some videos. When do we expect to see those? Very soon. Um, I think they're going to start roll around early next month. We actually cut a deal with this radio station here in Finland that we're going to premiere them on their site like twice a week. I think Mondays and Thursdays you're going to get new episodes for I don't know how many weeks. I think we have gonna gonna have like six or eight episodes all together, and they're gonna be pretty cool. So next month, is it, we're gonna see any of these guitar battle fights here you were talking about. <laughs> uh, the battles weren't really played simultaneously. It was like <laughs> I was there first, and he came later, and then we just, you know, we can't really fit in the same room because of the ego. So it's just <laughs> this way. Yeah, we had yeah. a we had a big uh, like uh, octagon. At the front yard, the guys went there. They punched each other. Then the yeah. winner came out to the studio and played, yeah, played, played the it. solo. That's right, pure Mad Max mayhem <laughs> kind of deal. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, you get the release coming up on the 20th of October, and you get some shows there in Finland. Do you plan to uh, do any more touring outside of? into Europe or, or coming over to the States or anywhere else? Uh, we have a bunch of plans Yeah, for next year. This year we're going to just mostly play here in Finland. Maybe some uh, little things abroad in Europe. But uh, the whole States thing, it's again, we really wish to get there as fast as possible for the first time. But uh, it takes a, a lot of things, Just not just a band who wants to get there. We need to find the right tour and... Uh, the right support slot, and all, all kinds of bullshit that goes with it. So I hope so that next year we'll get to play there, like for this album. But I can't make any promises. Okay. Uh, now, out of all the places, if you could play anywhere right now, if you could go play anywhere, what you want to go play? Ari. Um. Uh, I think I'd like to go to Japan first. Yes, that was that was just crazy. That was that was great. Yeah, yeah. I've been there before by himself with his solo band, and we've been there in two thousand and one uh, six, which was really cool. So Japan is definitely one of the favorite places for us. For me, it would be uh, Tel Aviv, Israel. I would like to play a show there, or uh, yeah, for sentimental reasons. Yeah, I don't know, maybe either Tokyo or, um, um, one of the cool, the cooler clubs in, uh, LA, I would like to play for the first time in the States, finally, because we've played in a lot of places, but never in the States, and I have a bunch of friends in LA, so it would be fun to play for them in, maybe, Out of Blues or the Key Club or something. Is there anything the fans can do to help you guys out in getting to, you know, here, Brazil, Mexico, anywhere, that, is there anything the fans can do? Well, yeah, actually we're talking about Mexico at the moment, so I hope that works out for February, I think. But what fans can do is just spread the word and let people know and gig organizers and festival promoters know that you guys want to see us there. And that's always helpful to keep the name out there. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, uh, speaking of touring... Still, uh, one thing you can't go on tour without, it's a non-musical item and your laptop does not count. Ari, you go first. Hmm. That's maybe my, be my iPad. <laughs> yeah, iPad. Uh, maybe maybe my, my uh, mask stick. I think so. 
because I, I just love playing playing pool. So I almost almost never leave leave home without it. Yeah, for me it's a it's a skateboard uh, and obviously some some like geeky books or whatever. <laughs> so if I had to choose between between those, uh, I'd I'd probably go with the skateboard. That's good. So so I don't have to take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not lending you mine though. Oh, I love you, but damn. I'm not lending you my skateboard. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go with a fresh pair of boxers and a couple of t-shirts. It's nice to change them every once in a while when you're touring for a month. So. Boring! <laughs> and my laptop. That I doesn't count. Boring! <laughs> Boring, says Mr. iPad. Too. And my <laughs> iPad. And <laughs> Ari's iPad I would like to take on tour all. <laughs> Okay, favorite tour food. When well, since we know good Ari steak. likes to eat good steak. Yeah, a big, big juicy steak with some uh, some butter and and stuff over it, and and a good salad. Butter on a steak. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, I think uh, on tour any food is good as long as it's free. So. <laughs> yeah, the free food always tastes a bit better. For some reason, but um, yeah, it's true. Pretty much anything that's decent. Like we've had chicken necks in some weird parts of Germany, which wasn't all that great. Uh, but uh, you know the classics: a good pizza every now and then, and maybe a steak. I'll go with uh, string cheese from Slovenia. That was awesome. Yeah, that's that's beautiful. You gotta have string cheese from Slovenia. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to change mine to string cheese from Slovenia. <laughs> All right, and and I'll I'll have the uh, IKEA meatball from Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have the free uh, string cheese from Slovenia. <laughs> free is always good. Yeah, free is always good. Okay. All right. Um. Okay, how do you pick your set list, and um, how many songs do you plan? Uh, new songs are, are you playing on live, and how many old songs are you going to keep? We're going to play a lot of the new stuff. We have a lot of new songs, and pretty much almost all of them are, like, good live songs. We just talked about it with the guys. Like, there's so many good set list openers on this album, whereas usually we have, like, maybe one or two at the opening track, and maybe one else on the previous album that actually can get the show going, but now we have a bunch of them, so a lot of the new stuff, and we still have no idea what we're going to play from the old ones. I guess a lot of lots from Show Your Colors, we want the Audi material to be the, king, the lion's share of the set list, but we're going to keep some of the old stuff with the growling vocals and like the cooler songs in there, too. Okay. All right. Uh, stranded on a deserted island, you get five bands to put on your iPod. What five bands? Uh, five bands. Oh, five bands. Okay. okay. Who wants to go first? Go yeah. ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I have to put a winger on there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I would. Uh, then, I guess Mashuga would have to be on there. I love Mashuga. Um, old school thrash metal. I'd probably go with Megadeth. Um, let's see, Skid Row would have to be on there. Then I'd probably have, like, uh, well, I like listening to, like, like uh, 50s rockabilly stuff, but that's usually in collections because they didn't, like, release albums, they only released singles, but uh, if I had to choose, I would say maybe, uh, I don't know, either Eddie Cochran or Johnny Burnett, one of those guys from the 50s. That's an interesting list. All right, Ari? Um, damn, this is hard. Maybe. <laughs> um, well, Rage Against the Machine, uh, Pantera, uh, Cypress Hill, Sikt, um, 
And, uh, well, Ben, this is for you and all the guys. Tornado. <laughs> oh, cool. Guess we have a huge back catalog to keep you busy on the yeah. island. <laughs> Smart choice, dude. Yeah. I think Reggie Gets the Machine has like three albums too, so you should have thought like about somebody who has like 20 out, al- like Iron Maiden or something, to keep you busy. <laughs> but, yeah. I would go with Guns N' Roses for the rock and roll, Pantera for the metal, uh, Pink Floyd for the moody stuff, Ooh, then yeah. uh, Danny Elfman's soundtracks, and um, something else. Michael Jackson for the brilliant pop. Cool. All right. I figured he'd pick Skid Row, and he didn't. I would pick Skid Row. Yeah, it, it's not in the top five if I'm deserted on an island. I'm sorry. And they only have, like, three albums I like, so. Ah, yeah, but so yeah, the first two albums are pure gold. Besides, we're probably going to be stranded on that desert island together, so we can, like, swap iPods. <laughs> yeah, because that's... Probably That's where the whole tour ends. Yeah. <laughs> but you see, I'm the only guy here who thought practical, not just, yeah, I like this band. I also thought about the back catalog, that there's also quantity, not just quality. Although yeah. I went for quality, but I went for a lot of material also. So yeah, guys, I think that's really <laughs> pretty much covered there. So. <laughs> uh, well, well I, can, I can change still to, like, Beastie Boys no, and the he mode or, or something. No, 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 <laughs> like, Cypress still is good. Go with them. Yeah. Morbid <laughs> Angel, they got, they've got, like, over 10 CDs. Or so. Yeah, Cody Page, someone has, like, 20 yeah. CDs. So you should go with him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm going to stick with mine, so. <laughs> All right, uh, okay, so right now, what's your favorite music to listen to? Right now, right now. Uh, I've been on a heavy Bowie trip, like uh, David Bowie albums from, from the 90s, like uh, Outside and Earthling, uh, right up until like hours. I've been listening to a lot lately. Yeah. All right. I've, I've been actually listening a lot to... Uh, the old old Eminem stuff and uh, Lady Gaga and open and uh, I just found out this great Swedish uh, singer called Wendy McNeil who I'd never heard before I just got her CD and it's really cool moody stuff and I've been finding finding her CD in my player like day in and day out so I would have to say her okay Okay, uh, Ben, this one I guess goes towards you. How do you expect people to see Immoral, and is there a message you want to bring out with your music, and why did you choose the name Immoral? Uh, we chose it together like 10 years ago, and it really doesn't really have, the name doesn't have a meaning <laughs> for itself. It's just a cool word from a bunch of cool names that we had on a paper, on a list. That we had. The situation was we wanted to release our first demo, and... We're just too lazy to figure out a name, so we just left it for the very last minutes, which is exactly what happened. We had to figure out a name, and we I think we decided on a deadline, and everybody brought their suggestions, and we went with that one because it was short and sweet, and just it wasn't used before. So. It's cool that you're asking. Uh, uh, ben, I got to ask you a follow-up question to that. Did you actually flip through, like, uh, dictionaries and whatnot to get to name immoral? Because if you did, you didn't get too far along with the dictionary. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I didn't come up with the name, but I think, I'm sure some of us, um, I can't remember if I did, but probably I did, like, open an uh, English dictionary at some point. But I can't really remember. It's so long ago. And I was smoking a lot of crack back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> that era. Yeah, everything is pretty hazy. Yeah. And you gave up the crack for the pinball machine, right? I gave the crack for the love of life. <laughs> okay, Ari, this one is for you. Um, it's from Fernanda. She every singer with a moral was changed into join the band, and also she wants to know if you could say hi to her. 
Well, hi, first of all. Uh, I've been singing, wait a second, about eight years now, I think so. And what has changed? Well, I needed to learn how to grow, obviously. And that was just something that that came along with, with live shows. I actually, when I got to the, to the rehearsal space the first time with the guys, I didn't know if, if I could do it though or, or not. And it was a big surprise to me too that I, I knew how to do it somehow. You know, Ari, this is actually very interesting news to me because the first time I met you and we talked about you maybe trying out for this band, you said that you're an excellent growler and you can do the job as well. well of, of course I said that. <laughs> so, uh, he wanted the job. Lying, you fucker. Yeah. <laughs> well, you at the first you're time okay. we spoke, I, I actually thought that you're a you're an excellent guitar player and 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 the band is like like for um for death metal and, and stuff so so fuck you too so i guess we just <laughs> we're lying to each other a lot back when you joined yeah you thought yeah, you joined a death metal band and i thought i had a good death metal singer and yeah and here's the results <laughs> yeah that's why the crack pipes flew out the window so <laughs> Step one is honesty, brutal honesty. <laughs> that's Apparently that's the next what we're getting nine steps are. <laughs> so Ben, you're welcome. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. What else do you guys do uh, besides music for fun or obligation? And what would you do if you weren't doing music? Mossy. Oh. Um, Start with you. Well. Uh, <laughs> I'd probably go back to university and read some more geeky books or whatever. Um, I don't know. Uh, probably be a bum, just skateboard around, read read books that I like, but but uh, I wouldn't find a like normal everyday use for. I don't know. I'd be a shoplifter. <laughs> I'm not strong enough to lift shops. Okay, Ari. Um, well, all, all I do is music. It's duo gigs and trio gigs and moral and whatnot. But if I didn't do music, I I think I'll I'll be skateboarding with Marcy or something. And I I like to play pool, um, bowl. I like all kinds of like uh, little sporty things. Things. We've been playing playing a bit of basketball this summer with the guys also and stuff like that. Yeah, that's about it. Yeah, um, I actually have no idea what I would do if I wasn't playing. I haven't really thought about it. Like, what could occupy the same amount of time in my life in the space? But uh, other than that, I just. Like must enjoy some reading and the occasional throwing of the basketball and working out and the usual stuff, music and movies. But uh, I don't know. I'd really have to think about what I'd want to do if I lose both hands tomorrow and have to think about something else to do with the rest of my life. So I don't really have an answer, like an astronaut or a policeman or a, um, I don't know. Sorry. All right, uh, Masi, you joined the band at the beginning of the year. What's it been like, and what do you look forward to? Actually, I joined the band at the end of last year. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. Can I have the question again? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, so what's, it, what's it like, and what do you look forward to being in the band? Well, uh, obviously it's great fun. Um it's it's been really great to have like a sparring partner for guitar playing and and kind of like a new group to try to fit into and get get like into the groove of how they do things uh, as opposed to how I I'm used to playing which is really a lot dif uh, different because I'm 
I was so used to kind of laying back and playing kind of lazy and, and all that. So I was overcompensating a lot in the beginning and trying trying to really be on top uh, of the beat and whatever. And it ended up, ended up being not so great. <laughs> but I'm kind of uh, getting relaxed into it and, and having a chill time with it. It's, should be super cool. And as far as the guys go, it's it's been uh, great to get uh, to have like really close friends again even at, at plus 30 something so so it's yeah I, I, and as far as uh, what I'm looking forward to I'm looking forward to going on tour with shitty bands and sleeping with other socks in my mouth and uh, <laughs> you know, all the stuff that comes with uh, let's say tours that aren't budgeted uh, as well as maybe Guns N' Roses tours are so does that make any sense? That's yep. what I'm looking for. Cool. <laughs> okay. You kind of already been doing this, but we'll we'll go for it anyway. Okay, now you gotta pick one of the other guys. We'll start with Mossy, we'll let you start first. You get to pick one of the other two and you have to tell either a short story or a funny fact on the other one. You have to tell on them. In this interview, okay. Yes. Um well um, unbeknownst to uh, many, Ari is an excellent player at Pictionary. Uh, one one time after uh, after uh, one of his solo shows, it was like I, I don't know, maybe two three years ago. I don't remember exactly, but something like, like, like that. three years ago. Three years ago, yeah, yeah. Um, we had an after party uh, at my place, and uh, obviously in the grand tradition of drunken Pictionary which happens at 5, 5 a.m. Uh, after the bars have kicked you out. Ari just totally dominated. We were an excellent pair in that, so do not dare to challenge Ari or myself, especially as a team, to Drunken Pictionary. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Ari? Yeah, actually, I was, I was going to tell that same story. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right, you need to do it, so you need another one. Uh, no, this is hard. When you got something in your mind, then no, you got to change. Well, uh, damn. Well, Ben, Ben, you go first. I try to think of something. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if it's, like... I doubt anybody would have expected it. I know I didn't when I asked Ari for the first time this summer, like, let's go throw some basketball around, that he would actually not only be okay with the basketball, he was actually really fucking good at throwing basketball. So, for some reason, he was the best in the whole group of friends who have been playing this summer. I don't know when he exactly practiced or with who, but uh, the dude is like, I, I guess his mom is black or something, because he... <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, you had some serious moves on you, man. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah, actually, that was the first time I played since, like, maybe 1990s, so... <laughs> yeah. It was it was a big big surprise to me, too. You're like, D I'm sorry I keep winning all your money. I, I didn't know it was this good. I really yeah. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, when Ben called me and asked if, if I want to wanna go and shoot some hoops with him, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm that good. I, I just took all the money from Valtteri and stuff like that. And I was expecting something more. Yeah, I was expecting a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you got two more. All right, uh, you're getting close to the album release. Do you start to get nervous or worried about anything? Uh, at the moment, I'm nervous that the print houses where we're going to print the album is gonna, not going to fuck up my album <laughs> because we put so much time and effort into this whole uh, album cover and layout and everything and I've seen some disastrous results sometimes when you know they don't measure something right or the colors are not just correct so I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that the colors and everything is going to be as vivid and as great looking that they are at the moment but uh, I guess you mean about the reactions of the people and stuff. Yeah, of course, you always get a little bit anxious about it. Closer to the date, it's, it seems pretty far away still, so 
Uh, I'm going to be nervous on the day we're going to have the pre-release party, you know, the bar in Helsinki, when people are actually hearing it, then I'll, I'll start to get nervous. Yeah, for me, it's, it's been, well, 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 we started to, like, demo these, these songs almost, what, oh, almost two years ago, I think. No. Well, not, well, not one yeah. One year ago, man. Yeah, well, well, one year, one and a half year, whatever. And, and since the album has been kind of ready for over, over half a year now, I'm I'm just I just want it out. So I don't have to like like hide it anymore. <laughs> it feels like it feels like uh, I'm I'm keeping a big secret that I want to tell somebody. And I want it out. So we all want as uh <laughs> before Ben said that uh that uh, I hope they don't fuck up the cover art or whatever. The thought hadn't even crossed my mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now I'm worried about that. <laughs> now I'm nervous about that. So before I wasn't, but sorry yeah. about that. Yeah, I'm gonna lose some sleep now. So I have to. I'm great at worrying about things. Like when you have a million things on your mind, you you learn to worry about all kinds of weird ass shit. This is just one of them. I can give you a list of things to worry if you don't have enough. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can give you some medication that'll keep you going. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to hear your worries now. I've got more than enough of my own. Cool. Okay. Last question. All right. Fill in the blank. I would love... Sorry. What? It's a, it's a fill in the blank question. Start right. I I would love um to get this album out right now. <laughs> All right, Mossy. I would love to see a world where uh, every day was a triumvirate of happy successes and great emotional rewards without any sort of irony or. Uh, well, any sort of irony. Mathi, have Thanks, you been ha, have you been smoking pot? <laughs> Not enough. <I've> been, <laughs> <apparently. laughs> I tried it once, like in the nineties or something, but I'm still you trying to wear hippie. off the effects. You old hippie, you. Yeah, I know. Woodstock was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Like it yes. was yesterday. Uh, not the 90s Woodstock, the 60s Woodstock. Yeah, 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 I know. I have it on Blu-ray or something. I have it on Blu-ray. I have it on acid flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I would love a chocolate donut right now. <laughs> oh. That's I've been best. dreaming, dude, I've been dreaming about a donut, like a serious donut, like a Dunkin' Donut, something like that, for like two days now, and I just don't have any of those donut places near me, so I'm just craving for a donut. I'm going to have to go buy one tomorrow. <laughs> i got to get this over with. Yeah, Dunkin' Donuts. That's old school, that's drinking donuts or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to go for a Krispy Kreme right now, I don't care. Just give me a donut and I'm good. Let's drink and go nuts. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd mail you one, but I think it'll be stale by the time it gets there, so. Yeah, exactly. It's a thought that counts. <laughs> they closed our Krispy Kreme. We still got Duncan, but they closed our Krispy Kreme, so. Yeah, but Duncan is better. I think it's just a bit too greasy, the Krispy Kreme. Yeah, that's true. Okay. What we okay. should have in Finland, I know it's really, really kind of passe and whatever, but we should have a frozen yogurt. <laughs> no one ever yeah, has that. Yeah, and king of burgers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And show it. Oh, one thing we should have in Finland this summer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For more than two days. <laughs> our summer was too long. I sent you part of ours this year. Oh, cool. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
We spent way too many days in the 90s and the 100s, so you can have them. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Good <laughs> Okay, well, you guys survived the, th the 23 questions. Great. Yay. Great. Thanks for having us. I'm a survivor. Thanks for, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for doing it. Really appreciate it. Now, thank you guys for hooking up with the questions and going through with this. Sounds yeah. like a cool idea, like how the video is going to turn out, so can't wait to see it. Yeah, I can't either. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Now just some poor soul has to edit this piece of garbage down with all this <laughs> crap that we've been talking, actually just make some smart sentences out of all this, so good luck with that. Good luck with that. It's 42 minutes of pure torture. <laughs> yeah. And going, yeah. Uh, no, it's not torture. It'll be fun. Cool. Thanks for cool. doing this, and uh. Yeah, no take care. All right, nice talking to you guys. You too. You too. Take care. Yep. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.